name is GamerKid720, and I'm here back again to give you guys my thoughts on Ruby Volume 2, Episode 2. And basically, there's a whole lot going on in this show, so I'm going to sum it up under 5 minutes and let you guys know my thoughts. So let's get right into this video, bros. Okay, the episode kicks off with a small army fleet outside of Beacon, and, um... And the headmaster is not too happy about their students being interactive with the war because he doesn't want their students to know anything about war conspiring against the White Fang and his academy, and he just doesn't want that for his students. Also, um, a war general whose name gets um, never revealed in that episode, he talks about to the headmaster, are your girls ready to face a full-scale war? And then the headmaster just all like, I hope it never comes to that, because previously, like I said, he's not ready for his girls to do something like that. And, um, later on into the episode, the gang gets introduced to one of the monkey guy from season one's friends. I forget his name. I'm sorry about that. But yeah, they get introduced. He has taken a liking to Lice, which I did like, you know, a little romance there when it hurt anybody. You know, a little bit of rom romance, like, you know, John Ruby, you know, some, some. Um, and also, later in the episode, the headmaster has, there's kind of like a flashback of Blake's interview into the academy, and he's asking her, like, not only is she a faunist, but she's the only one that didn't train in his school to get introduced to Beacon Academy, and that's just kind of mind-blowing to me because, like, all these girls and all these guys trained so hard to get into the school, but they just didn't and that's crazy um and then the headmaster also talks about how ruby i mean not ruby but blake needs to expose her true self like stop with the whole bow thing and show her true ears but then blake is just upset because she's just like i want people to like me for who i am and not what i look like and that's the ear thing so she said i'm gonna just remain who i am and stay true to myself which i really liked i mean Blake's a strong character, not only skill-wise, but just mentally-wise. That's why she's one of my favorite characters in the movie. But also, um, Blake just goes off, because in the whole episode, she's just so angry at the world. She she confesses her true feelings about torture, Torchwick and the White Fang, saying that, hey, something big is conspiring, and we don't know what it is. And Weiss is just all like, we're not ready. And Blake's just like, we'll never be ready. We don't know. Everything, they're not going to wait until our graduation day to do something. And they're just not going to wait. It's going to happen right now. So Ruby said, let's be the youngest team in history to take down the White Fang and Torchwood. Which is major foreshadowing on the Ruby series. I can't wait to see what else Ruby has to bring in these, fur in these further episodes. I don't want to spoil too much for those of you that haven't seen it yet, but make sure you give this video a like, and make sure you comment below what all this major foreshadowing is about. And, you know, yeah. But before I wrap it up, there's one more thing that happened. This episode wraps up by Ruby running into the halls. It By Ruby running into the halls of the of the academy and she meets emerald and mercury and cinderfall and beacon outfits and i'm just all like whoa whoa what's going on here and that's just major foreshadowing like what are they there for are they trying to take down the headmaster secretly they're trying to take out ruby and her friends like we don't know yet that's only time will tell with this show guys well you know stay gaming thank you for subscribing thank you for 11,000 views i'm loving it just thank you guys Keep commenting. I love reading you guys' comments. You guys are just plain awesome. Alright then, bros. I'll catch you later. Stay good.